Welcome back to part two of my top 10 camp battles for the 2022 season for the Baltimore Ravens. Intro, please. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to start with the left guard position. And in this battle, I think it's Ben Cleveland, Ben Powers, and Tyree Phillips. Let's start with Ben Cleveland. I, if you saw my video from what, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I think it's Ben Cleveland's job to lose. Let's kind of take a look at a few of his play percentage uh, snaps to, to show you what led me to, to think that. So, obviously, he was a rookie last year coming out of Georgia. Uh, first, didn't play the first game. He was inactive. The next one, two, three, four games, next three games, he played about 43 on average percent of the snaps. Uh, that fifth game, he played only 5%. And then for the next four games, did not play at all. I don't know if he's inactive or whatnot. But then he was he was back. And then the next four games after that, so eight straight games, didn't see a snap. Did not one snap. And then those last four games played 100% of the snaps at left guard. And that those last four games led me to believe that was an audition to be the starter for this year. And that's why I did that video on him when I saw his stat line that he, you know, sparingly played for the first 14 weeks. And then those last four games, he played 100% of the snaps at left guard. So, you know, I think it's his job to lose, barring he doesn't do anything crazy because he has massive size. He has enough agility with that size, and he's not terrible at pass pro. Not terrible at pass pro. So, Ben Cleveland, you know, is, I think, the front runner for left guard. All right, next is Tyree Phillips. Now, you can't really count out Tyree because he won that job last year. He won, He started out at left guard. Uh, they, he was brought in to be a swing guy. I think he, he was brought in to be a tackle because he played tackle at Mississippi State. But he won the left guard battle outright last year. And he had up and down season. You know, it was rough on him at times because of some of the people he had to, to work against. So there really was no no easing into the the position for him. He was thrown in a fire and it was some fire thrown back at him and he didn't handle it well. So you can't just I can't really just count him out because he earned that job and he has some decent play. And if you look at the tape with Tyree, he's a better guard than he is tackle. So that's why I put him in the mix at, at left guard with being Cleveland and being Powers. Because you can't, you know, if, if Powers, I'm sorry, if Cleveland screws up, Tyree is right there. And then our third guy is going to be right there too. Our third guy is being Powers. All right, last on the list is being Powers. And I had to throw him on the list because if you look at his, his offensive snaps, the percentage from week 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Played 100% of the snaps at left guard. Then Powers took over for those last four games. That's why I can't discredit Ben Powers um, for the at this position. And I, I think if he does not surplant Ben Cleveland or Tyree Phillips, he may have a tough time even making the team. Really. It, this is his third year. Maybe his fourth year. Let's see. 19th. This will be his fourth year. So he, he got the shit to get off the pot this year. But um, he got a lot of snaps. A lot of snaps. 95% in week 5. Then week 6 through 13, 100% of the snaps. So he has the experience. Uh, got the snaps. Uh, what are you going to do with him in camp? We do not know. Like again, again, I think they took him out. Matter of fact, he didn't just not play those last four games. He was inactive. So, <laughs> I, again, I think that was an audition for being Cleveland to say, hey, you get this job. Show us what you got. It'll be yours going to the camp next year if you show us what you got. And summary for this position, I already alluded to it a couple of times. I think Ben Cleveland's going to win this job. I think Tyree's going to be his backup. And I think uh, Ben Powers is going to be either a rotational guy or have a tough time uh, making the, the team. All right, the next battle we're going to talk about is right tackle. Uh, three guys in the head again for right tackle. Um, I think it's a foregone conclusion who the main guy is going to be. But you got three, guy, three names that I'm going to throw in the hat uh, just in case the main guy slips up. So, obviously, the main guy is Morgan Moses. Uh, played every game last year for the Jets uh, at tackle. Uh, brought in as a, a signee. So, I don't see, unless he just completely pisses down his leg, I don't see anybody else starting at right tackle in front of him. Um, another name that's in there is uh, Falele. Falele is a huge, massive guy, um, a rookie. 
from Minnesota. I don't think he's going to be ready. And he may be ready, but I don't think he's as good as Mo- Moses is yet. I think he's the tackle of the future. And um, I just think hopefully he can come in and learn learn the position, maybe slim up a little bit more, maybe get a little bit more uh, better footwork. But as far as contact and leaning on people and moving people, Falele is a huge guy, and he does that very well. So, um, like, if, if he got a chance to play and we'd run, like, counter and power to his side where he just could down block on people, I think he moves some guys, even some NFL guys, because of that size. Uh, the third third name in the hat is uh, Jawar James. And um, unless Falele and, 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 and Moses do something crazy or get hurt, I think – Jawad James would be tough to make the team also unless he's going to be that swing tackle behind. Like, he'd be the fifth tackle, if, if I think. So, we'll see. But I think this, you know, to summarize this position up, I think it's Morgan Moses' job to to lose. And uh, if we get in some blowout situations, I think Falele will get a chance to come in and get some snaps. Now, flipping over to the defensive side of the ball, I only have three of these battles that I, I'm really looking forward to seeing on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, the first one is the third D lineman. I'm counting Calais Campbell as the first, Michael Pierce as the second. So who's going to be that third, maybe even that fourth guy to come in and spell those guys? Because they're older, and those third and fourth guys are going to get a ton of snaps, especially if we're trying to keep those guys fresh. So in that competition, I see um, – grab my paper again. Justin Matabike. Matabike flashed a lot last year, uh, especially when, when he went once – he had games where his snap count was up, his production was up. Now, I ain't the smartest man in, in the group, but a younger guy getting more snaps, getting more production, let the man play. Save the legs and the body and the wear and tear on, on Campbell. He's your he's your vocal leader. He's your physical leader. And if you have a fresh Campbell, he'll come up for you in the clutch. Let Matter BK play. Behind Matter BK, the rookie, who I think is going to rip the league up once he gets snaps. Travis Jones from UConn. How he was still there in the, what, was it the second round or the third round? Whenever we picked him up. Let me see. See if I can find it real quick. Mm-mm-mm. Give me one second. D3. <laughs> I don't know what round he was in, but put it in the comment section. Uh, whatever round he was in, it was a steal at the, the point that we got him. And I think the cat is freaking awesome. He, I think he he was my bang for book. And as far as projected, I think he was the best pick of the draft for us because of where we picked him up and how good he is. Uh, and the third guy in that group, Brent Irvin. Brent Irvin has one thing on Travis Jones and Matabike, and that's experience. Experience and experience. He's an older guy, but that experience count for for a lot, especially when it's nut cutting time. So can't can't discount Brent Urban. And I know him and Calais Campbell are technically defensive ends, but for the defense we play, to me they're D linemen. And your Ian guys are your edge, your outside linebackers. Oh, but to sum this up, I think Matter BK and Travis Jones are gonna play a lot. I think he's gonna get a lot of Calais Campbell and. Michael Pierce on first down, first second down. Then you bring them young bucks in, and then maybe if the drive extends, you'll get uh, Campbell and Pierce back in later on in the drive. But I see a lot of snaps going to Travis Jones, Matter PK, definitely early in the season, especially if Travis Jones shows his worth. And you can't forget about Brent Irvin because the defensive line they're gonna rotate in, they're gonna rotate in, try to keep him fresh. And so um, those three, I think all three are gonna play. But as far as the impact guys, I think it's gonna be Matter PK. And Travis Jones won't be far behind him. All right, the next position battle I want to see is the outside linebacker position opposite of Adafi Owe. So we brought Houston back. And one of my favorite guys is Dalen Hayes. Uh, let's talk about Houston for a minute. Houston is, is as Adafi calls him, Yoda. He's taught Owe a lot. He's well-respected, not only with Baltimore Ravens, but around the league. Just uncle... Not uncle. I'm going to say something else. Father time waits for nobody. And Houston's an older guy. Um, had a lot of pressures. Not a lot of sacks. Had a lot of pressures. A lot of hurries last year. Not a lot of sacks. 
uh, did come up with some timely plays for the Ravens. And with, you know, the t- the untimely passing of um, Sack Daddy, I think it was, they were already thinking about bringing him back. But when that happened, it was it just was a no-brainer to, hey, bring him back. He knows the system. He knows the players. He can be an asset. So um, just off reputation and history alone, I would say he's the front runner. But I really, really like Dalen Hayes. He was injured last year. But coming out of Notre Dame, I really liked his burst. Uh, young guy, athletic guy, can, can drop in the flats and maybe some short area straight drop backs into like a hook curl zone. I really, really like this dude. So I expect Houston to start off as the guy, but Hayes to constantly get more and more reps and hopefully put some distance between um, Ojabu before he comes back. Because everybody's going to be looking for Ojabu to come back, and Hayes better solidify himself as a role guy before Ojabu comes back because he's a rookie. Technically, he's a second-round rookie, but really he's a first-round rookie, which is why he's holding out right now. So, um... Taylor Hayes. Get it right, my boy. And the last camp battle I'm looking forward to seeing, which I shouldn't be looking forward to seeing it because he should have already taken this position and put a stranglehold on it, is Mike Linebacker. And no, we're not finna talk about Pat Queen. We're talking about Josh Bynes and Malik. We're going to talk about Josh Bynes first. All reliable. Josh Bynes is, oh, all right, like some of you guys and maybe even girls out there, you got this ex that you don't really mess with, but you know you can mess with when you need to. That's Josh Bynes for the Ravens. We don't, we ain't really putting putting you out there for everybody to see, but you know, when times get hard, you call him up. That's Josh Bynes. <laughs> but um, Malik. Malik, Malik. And we know Josh is going to start. We know Josh Bynes is going to start. Malik has flashed. Malik was starting to get some momentum going in his favor. Then he had that unfortunate incident back home. And I don't know if that incident got him in the doghouse or his practice or his play got him in the doghouse. But he was very, this like, like you barely saw him. And then they had him playing some outside linebacker at, at some point. But Malik has the physical tools to be a thumper and play Mike and allow Patrick Queen to do the off-ball stuff that he does. Malik, take this position. And no, I don't want to say that. Got to watch what we say these days. Take Just take this position and, and take all up, man. It's it's They're putting it out there on a platter for you to take. Because I promise you, if you don't take it this year, they drafting a Mike next year. And then don't don't let uh, Diego Fago and um, what's the boy from Auburn? He might be an outside linebacker. Let me see. Oh, Ross. Ross, the kid from Michigan. Don't let him ease in there on you because he probably already knows Mike McDonald's system. Mike McDonald's comfortable with him. Malik, don't let Ross. Matter of fact, I should have put Ross in, on this list. Ross, I'm adding Ross to the list right now. Simply because he knows Mike McDonald, knows the system, and McDonald knows what he can get out of Ross. So I'm putting three guys at, at in the position for this Mike. That's Malik Harrison, Josh Bynes, and Ross. Is his name Josh Ross? Josh Ross. So these are my top ten camp battles, man. I appreciate you guys for sticking through to the end. Uh, if you like what you saw, hit the like button. I would appreciate it. Um, subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, share. Put any of your thoughts in the comment section. I normally get back to them, if not immediately, at, eventually at some point. So I appreciate you guys for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Peace.